This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We have nine game slates in both the NBA and the NHL for tonight's national TV games. NHL trade deadline just around the corner, so it is a fantastic time to bring on Tom Vecchio and pick his brain on NBA and NHL for tonight at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Saunas. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research. Joined here as mentioned by Tom Vecchio. Check him out on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio1 find his work over on the daily iso our daily nba betting and dfs podcast on the fanduel research podcast feed tom happy tuesday how's it going i'm doing great yeah a super big slate for both nba and nhl it is absolutely crunch time for both of these sports this is not the time to mess around for anything no changing uh random rotations in nba or nhl time to trust the main guys stick with that and we should be in a good spot and it means a good product in front of us as well, which is always delightful too. Probably a bit less volatile in the prop market as well. So everyone wins and we'll get to watch some fun uh, sporting events across net. We'll talk to Tom to break down his favorite bets across the NBA and the NHL in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. Just search for Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. If you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. You can also find this show on the FanDuel YouTube page and on FanDuel TV+. Plus. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel America's number one sports book because right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and more. Just visit the FanDuel app and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online, real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, Virginia, and Vermont. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text Next Step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1-800-9-WITH-IN-INDIANA. 1-800-522-4700. Visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas. 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland. 1-800-GAMBLER.NET in West Virginia. 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York. Tom, let's start things off in the NBA. Couple of TNT games for tonight. We got the Celtics at the Cavs. That one should be a delight. And then the Suns at the Nuggets. Two really fun games. Which bets stand out to you in those games right now at FanDuel Sportsbook? Uh, let's start with the Celtics and the Cavs. And let's. Uh, there's actually two reasons why I'm targeting Jason Tatum rebounds plus assists tonight. It's at 13 and a half. We have Jalen Brown and Kristaps Porzingis both listed as questionable for the Celtics. So simply, and Tatum's already a high usage player to begin with. So seeing him do a little bit extra here or there is not going to be a surprise. So if Porzingis is out, it should be Al Horford starting, but because the Cavs have Evan Mobley and Jared Allen, two great rebounders, Tatum has always shown like he has the onus is on him to do a little bit more. So an opportunity thing will be increased for Tatum, but also given the fact that these are two very, very good defensive teams and not to mention, as I said, the Cavs are very good at rebounding. So to see this trend towards the under and see a lot of missed shots because of the tough defense, and therefore we see more rebounds because of the defense, Tatum should just naturally be in a spot because of the defensive matchup to just have more rebounds overall. So it's kind of a, a, a dual approach where Porzingis is out. Someone has to step up and do more rebounds. And then also the game environment with these two tough defenses should naturally you know, tend itself more towards rebounding, missed shots, kind of, a, I don't want to say an ugly game, but like a playoff type game that it's not going to be 130 to 120. 
All right, so Jason Tatum rebounds plus assists at FanDuel Sportsbook. The over is minus 122. That number is at 13 and a half right now for Jason Tatum. Uh, minus 122. That's not like it's moved a bit uh, since you looked at it earlier on. Is that still a value to you right now? Yeah, def- definitely not 14 and a half and not past 135. Okay, so still a value right now, but keep close tabs on that one as the evening progresses. Other uh, a TNT game for tonight is the Suns and the Nuggets right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. Nuggets favored by nine and a half in this one. What are you seeing in this one, Tom? Uh, Devin Booker is out for the Suns, and that lends uh, Bradley Beal to be in a good spot. Over 18 and a half points, minus 128. This is clearly a usage thing. His field goals, his three-point attempts, his overall usage just increase, obviously, when Booker is off the court. His first two games back, first game back, does a whole lot of nothing in the grand scheme of things just because they were fully healthy. Booker gets hurt. All of a sudden, he goes for 31 points. So we have to be trusting the Nuggets to stick with their main guys. As much as they do have a good rotation of players, it's about Durant and Beal tonight if they want to have a shot at taking down a very good Nuggets team. So Durant's number is just a touch too high for me. Beal at 18 and a half, saying at minus 128. Uh, over at FanDuel Research, we have projections of him going for close to 21. I like Beal tonight over 18 and a half. I will also say there's a secondary uh, play for the three-point props for Royce O'Neal. It's not posted. I haven't seen it anywhere. But Royce O'Neal has hit three straight threes, at least three threes in four straight games. And he's always been a great three and D guy. So now with Booker off the court, he should continue taking those threes. I just don't know where the market is. Okay, so we'll see where the market comes in on Royce O'Neal for the made threes category at FanDuel Sportsbook. It is not posted as of yet, as Tom mentioned, uh, but it sounds like he's heating up a bit outside, getting more usage with no Devin Booker. But the one that Tom does like right now is Bradley Beal over 18 and a half points, minus 120, and uh, Tom, the good company guy at the plug, for the projections over at FanDuel Research as well. So those are two games, Tom. We have seven other games across the NBA for tonight. Which other player props stand out to you with where things stand right now? Uh, Let's go to the Raptors. They are at home, nine-point underdogs versus the Pelicans. As as solid as the Pelicans are overall as a team, they actually struggle a little bit allowing three-pointers, 24th in the league, allowing just over 13 threes per game from their opponents. Scotty Barnes is likely done for the year for the Raptors, their high-usage player. So the three-point market for Gary Trent over two and a half threes is sitting at plus 100. It was plus 102 right when I started the daily ISO. I think this is fine at plus 100. He takes a, a high volume of three-point shots. That's mainly what he does, while R.J. Baird and Manuel quickly should be the primary shooters for the Raptors. Gary Trent still plays a very solid role. He's been shooting threes, whether he was in Portland. doesn't matter where he is, and, he, and he's been known to do this. So, you know, as much as I said, we should be trusting like the main guys for teams. This is an opportunity thing because Scotty Barnes is out of the lineup and two and a half for a player that's routinely taking seven, eight, nine threes per game is very viable. And the main players component is fluid based on who's available. And right. with the Raptors not having not being at full strength right now, Trent may not be like a main character yet on yes. that roster, but he becomes more of a focal point in that situation. Correct. And yeah, the Raptors, are they the best team in the league? Of course not. They're probably not going to make the play in at all. But at, at two and a half at even money, I will take it for a player that can routinely push towards 16 or so points, the majority of it coming from threes. All right, that's for the Pelicans, Raptors, Gary Trent, over two and a half made threes, even money right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. Any other props you're targeting for tonight, Tom? Yeah, only one, and that would be Kyrie Irving for the Mavericks, over 37 and a half PRA, uh, minus 111, or was just a little while ago. Raptors are on a, uh, excuse me, not the Raptors, Mavericks are on a two-game losing streak. Pacers on a two-game losing streak. Surprise, surprise, high over-under in this game. It's 37 and a half. Luke is listed as questionable. And I, I said it's 38 and a half now. Okay, so Luke is listed as questionable. He has not missed any games recently. That is, so that's just one thing. But if he gets ruled out, that, that number is not going to stay there. That's number one. Number two, when we look back at uh, Kyrie Irving's game logs this side of the all-star break he's taking 18 22 24 20 23 and 20 field goal attempts so he's pushing to 29 or 30 points with Luca in the lineup and he's getting close to a PRA line by points alone so when we're dealing with a, a pacer game 246 over under and the potential for Luca to miss I want to jump in on this number now before it moves not to mention the fact that the Mavs just simply need to win this game 
Right. So right now that number is 38 and a half at minus 104. So we have seen some movement towards the over here with this Irving PRA bet. 38 and a half is a full notch above where it was before. Right. Now, maybe that could be the odds of Doncic sitting could be increasing potentially, something like that. But where does this number have to settle in before you decide to pass? If we assume that that Luca stays questionable for the time being. I would I wouldn't play it at 39. Okay. That, and that's what it comes down to. When you when you see 29, 29, 30, 29, and 28 points yeah. just in these this stretch of games with Luca in, that's awesome. And he yeah. always can add in the assist, dishing the ball around. But at 39, just be based on the variability of how the Mavericks have been struggling, that yeah. is where it gets into question for me. Okay, so keep close tabs on this Kyrie Irving market. Be picky with it. Uh, should it move even more? Over 38 and a half is minus 104 right now. FanDuel Sportsbook. So Tom does like that for now, but check back on that later. Tom is liking Jason Tatum. Rebounds plus assists over 13 and a half, minus 122. Bradley Beal over 18 and a half points, minus 128. Gary Trent over two and a half made threes, even money. And then Kyrie Irving over 38 and a half PRA. That is minus 104. Let's talk some NHL, Tom. Oh, did I miss one? No, no. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm make sure I thought I missed one for a second. No, no. But anyway, let's talk some NHL. And the trade deadline is rapidly approaching. That's coming up this week. And we know in the NBA that leads to chaos. And for the NHL, obviously, it's not quite as big of a, an issue. And we talked about the trade deadline with you earlier on. You said it might be a lot of role players who are on the move. Role players won't shift markets as dramatically as a star player, but they can still impact the viability of a team when it comes to the Stanley Cup playoffs where every edge does matter. So any futures you want to look at right now before we get to the trade deadline this week? Yeah, so if you bring up the either the Stanley Cup odds or the Western Conference odds, I think how we approach a team like Vancouver is really interesting. And we, we have seen, um, actually, just last night, we saw some players actually sit out for some teams from Seattle, Alexander uh, Wenberg, to be specific. So if you look at either the West or the Stanley Cup odds, if you scroll to the top just to show where Vancouver is relative. I can't Vancouver, get them on the screen even. <laughs> right, right. So Vancouver is kind of like this second-tier team, realistically, right? Yeah. How many points do you think Vancouver has? Or no where idea. do you think? Okay. So Vancouver right now has the most points in the Western Conference, right? And they have the third most points overall in the league, which is a bit of a surprise to see them fifth to win the West. So Vancouver has gone through all these ups and downs where they start off extremely hot and then they go like two and eight over the next 10 and then they're super hot and then they're, then they're super cold and then they're kind of in the middle right now. So my point being with Vancouver is if other teams around them, like Edmonton, like Colorado, make more moves – specifically Edmonton potentially getting Jake Gensel from uh, Pittsburgh or the abs picking up another center. Vancouver's odds are, are not going to get better. They're going to get worse, Yeah, but they still lead the conference. So if those, if that number drops to closer to 10 to one for Vancouver, that's where I'll have interest in them winning the West. As I said, they've been a roller coaster this year, super hot, super cold, but if they get to the playoffs and they hit a super hot streak, just based on it being hockey and the variability that actually presents a lot of value at 10 to 1. They're also not on the same side of the bracket as Colorado, Dallas, and Winnipeg, and they would only have to face one of them if they make it to the conference final. So the teams ahead of them are going to cannibalize each other just because they have to, to get to the conference finals. And Vancouver, if they run hot, basically, they have an easier path than the odds would suggest. Are there any major holes in Vancouver they could patch up heading into this trade deadline, or are they just kind of like a good depth team? They, they made a great move like a month ago, getting Elias Lindholm from Calgary, and they're just running cold right now. That's all. They have a super solid team. Thatcher Demko could win the Vesna if it weren't for Connor Hellyabuck from uh, the Jets. They have great defense. They have all the pieces. It's just like, why are they not putting it together every single night? It's just like they go 2-8, and eight and then they're 7-3 and three in their next 10, and it's just all over the place. But because it's hockey, that variability does, I think, present an opportunity. And which version of Vancouver do you think is more legitimate? The the cold version we've seen recently, the hot, because they've had the hot streaks as well. Where do they actually settle in from like a true team strength? Because obviously like they're not sacrificing those points. Right. They get to keep the points they earn on the hot streaks regardless. Like right. that, those are baked in no matter what. But like, what do you think the true team strength of them is when it all boils down? Leading the conference, being the, being the quote unquote best team in the conference. I don't think that's what it is. Sure. I would take as I've talked about Dallas plenty of times, I would take Dallas and Colorado ahead of them. 
they would probably be tied for third alongside Edmonton. So they are a good team. Do they have that eliteness? Do they have the experience to win in the playoffs? Maybe not. But again, if they run hot, anything can happen in the playoffs. And again, as you mentioned, the bracket plays out well for them with Dallas and Winnipeg being the opposing sides, even though you like them more. It's not teams they would face until pretty far down the line. So keep tabs on the Canucks. See how things play out as we get to the deadline on Friday. If their odds do lengthen at that point, maybe that could be a point to buy into them specifically to win the Western Conference. Currently 6-1 to FanDuel Sportsbook, but some potential for better odds later on. Right. Let's shift focus now and talk about uh, the slate for tonight. Nine games in the NHL, Tom. Let's start with the traditional markets. Where are you seeing value when it comes to spreads, money lines, totals? So I have one pick now and one lean, which we based on game. So let's go to Winnipeg. Timo just spoke about. They're taking on Seattle. Seattle's on the second of a back-to-back. As I mentioned for Seattle, they held out Alexander Wenberg last night because he's almost certainly going to be traded. There's also speculation that they could be trading Jordan Eberle, one of their other top forwards. So I like Winnipeg to win in regulation at minus 120. The money line is where it should be. Obviously, Winnipeg is very good. Elite defense. That's why we see a five and a half over under. But if they already held out Winberg last night and they choose to hold out Eberle, their team is who's just a a middle of the road team to begin with is just going to be that much weaker against a team that is just factually better. So at minus 120 to win in regulation is very fair for the Jets. If we get news that, they're going to absolutely hold out these players again. That number's not going to stay there. I wouldn't be surprised to see that move, the line move to minus, to minus 200 overall in the regular money line. And therefore, the three-way money line would also be impacted. So minus 120 on the Jets right now. That's for the 60-minute money line. For the traditional right. money line for Winnipeg, minus 178. But as Tom mentioned, should we get news on Seattle later on, that number could shift if they do decide to sit some players once again. You mentioned there was a potential lean that you could be looking towards uh, elsewhere. What was that one? That's with Pittsburgh. And this, the money line is absolutely fair for where they are at home, minus 235. Blue Jacks on the second night of a back-to-back. As I said, this is not the time to mess around. Pittsburgh are fighting for every single point that they can get right now. They are, they're really not in a great spot for the playoffs, but this is not a matchup they should be losing. So I don't have interest in the money line. I don't have interest in the puck line. I don't have interest in the three-way money line. I have interest if this game starts off super slow and it's tied or the Blue Jackets maybe jump out to a lead. It's one nothing. Penguins live money line at about minus 150. That's where I have interest. So I, I the Penguins are a better team. They should win this game. So if we can get a live line at 0-0 heading into the second and things are changing, whatever it might be, minus 150 or better. Now, let's say hypothetically they get in a hole because that's the other their situation that can lead to dramatic switches in the money line. Do you have enough faith in Pittsburgh's offense to make up a deficit should they fall behind early on in this game? Well, I've talked about Penguins uh, and their offense struggling overall. They have an awesome defense. Yeah, and they're they're top five in the league for fewest goals allowed. Their their offense is not there. Also, with missing Jake Gensel, uh, who's injured, even though he still might be traded, is not great. If the if I like if I'm watching the game and I see that they're actually getting a ton of chances, sure. but they're not scoring. Okay, that is where I'll have interest in them. If they're actually just playing terribly, I wouldn't have interest in them. But if it's tied at minus one fifty, that's a different story. Okay, so the Pittsburgh money line right now is minus 235, but keep an eye if you're able to watch that Blue Jackets game. Keep tabs on things, see what Pittsburgh's offense is doing, and if you do get a better money line later on, if it's a a, a nothing-nothing game, something like that, then maybe that could be the time to buy into Pittsburgh. Let's talk some player props, Tom. What you seeing there across the NHL for tonight? Let's stay in that same game. Trusting the same guys, Sidney Crosby. He's minus 105 for a goal. No, thank you. Crosby, though, over three and a half shots at minus 102 is the first spot. Again, super simple. They have to win this game because if they don't win these games this week, they actually should be selling at the deadline, which is a a tough thing to do with Crosby. Mm -hmm. So Crosby over three and a half shots at sitting at minus 102. The points market is not posted on the FanDuel Sportsbook. If you look across the industry, Crosby over one and a half points is sitting at plus 154. That That is a spot that I love. The Blue Jackets are not a good defensive team. They just aren't. And they made some changes to their lineup. Do they look a little bit better on offense? Sure. I, I've sp- I've written about them and Kirill Marchenko and Diego Chinnikov over these past few weeks because they're actually looking somewhat capable on offense. Their defense is still terrible. So Crosby and the Penguins needing to win this game means that Crosby is going to be double shifted on power plays, whatever it might be, over one and a half points if you can get that market. It's at plus 154 across the industry. 
Sidney Crosby's still chugging, trying to will this team towards the playoffs. Keep he's having an awesome seller. season. Yeah. And that's part of the disappointment is he's having a great year and they are not. And you don't want to waste anything. that. Right. So they have to win these games where they need to sell. Yeah. So Crosby over three and a half shots, minus one or two. At the points market does go up at FanDuel Sportsbook. Tom Lux over one and a half, uh, plus 150, something somewhere in that range. Potentially could be a good market to buy into Crosby there as well. What other player props are you eyeing elsewhere, Tom? You got two more. One would be the late game with Dallas at San Jose. 410 road favorites, Dallas is. Right. And we and now we saw the Avs last week, road favorites versus Chicago. They're also roughly there, about 300 minus 300. If we go to the anytime goal market for Dallas, it is dramatically different than what we saw with the Avs last week. McKinnon and Ranton were minus 120, minus 110. So we have a team that is a massive, massive favorite, yet their first goal store is at plus 155. So we actually drop a little bit further down to Matt Duchesne at plus 195 for a goal. Duchesne is having a fantastic season for the Stars. He's doing it all on a one-year contract, proving it. High-volume shooter, hasn't scored in the recent set of games. The money line would indicate how bad San Jose is. Goals against, shot attempts against, high danger chance against, you name it. So I will take a player on the second forward line, first power play, who has this high volume. They're expected to win. And he's also due for some positive regression when, when we're seeing three, four shots on goal and he's not scoring. So I want to like, uh, what's the word? I want to like compare this to the abs last week where it's like, yeah. we're not betting minus 120 for a goal, but we actually have a similar situation where we can get, I'm going to say an awesome number plus 25 when the money line is essentially the same. That's again for Matt Duchesne in the Stars versus Sharks game. Anytime goal score for Duchesne, a plus 195 in, a, in a, a game where it's a team we trust in Dallas. We talked a lot about them throughout this entire year, a team we don't trust in the Sharks. And a good matchup here where we expect Dallas to pour in some points and Duchesne to be a big part of that. So plus 195 for a goal for him. What's the other prop you are liking for tonight? That would be the Islanders with Brock Nelson over two and a half shots. It's only minus 120. Uh, I've spoken about the Islanders where they went through this coaching change. They've actually been playing significantly better compared to where they were earlier in the season. Uh, the Blues, second night of a back-to-back. -back. The Blues over the last two weeks, they're allowing the sixth most total shot attempts per six minutes in 5v5 situations. It went up, up to at, three and a half, Tom. I got oh, bad news. Three and a half. Uh, it's plus 112 over three and a half. Let me check out the, the to get two plus shots or the to get three plus shots. For Nelson, minus 235. What Ooh. happened? It, it was it was at two and a half, minus 120. Well, how did this happen? <laughs> uh, what is... Are we going to do this on the fly? What is... I mean, can you check for... I mean, Horvat and Barzell. What would be for four plus for Horvat and Barzell? Uh, Horvat is plus 132 to get four plus, and Barzell is plus 136. Nelson's plus 112. <laughs> What in the world happened to this market? <laughs> That's a good question. I mean, th these are all fair numbers, and the Nelson one stood stood out to me. Sure. I guess it's good that it stood out. You know, clearly other, others agreed. And unfortunately for us, they agreed too soon. I, I think it, it might just be a stay away now. Yeah. But, I mean, if across the industry, if you can find it at yeah. two and a half, that would be the spot to go. As I said, Blue Jackets, second night of a back-to-back, they're rolling the – Six most sh total shot attempts per six minutes over the last two weeks. Nelson has been playing, and again, the Islanders overall have been playing super solid. So I would look to Brock Nelson if you can find him at two and a half. Yeah. But other than that, I guess it's, uh, I guess we missed the boat here. Uh, for Horvat and Barzal for four plus shots, how, how generous would that need to be to entice you? Are we talking like plus 150 to be like a fair number there where you'd actually be willing to fire? How far do we need to go before you're actually willing to look at that? Uh, they're nearly identical, right? They yeah. play on the same line. Horvat is 33 shots in the last 10 games. Barzell is 34. First forward line, first power play. They're both the same. Um I mean, I if it's a if it's a literal coin flip, I would just take Barzell at plus one thirty six instead of plus one thirty two. And yeah, if you if some other book has them reversed, I would just do the opposite. Okay, so hold off for now. 
See if you can get a better number on Barzal or Horvat at some point, or maybe Nelson uh, lagging behind elsewhere. See if you can take advantage of that at some point. But the ones Tom is eyeing for tonight, Winnipeg to win a regulation at minus 120. You like Sidney Crosby over three and a half shots, minus 102. Crosby potentially over one and a half points, uh, plus 154. Somewhere in that range, if you can find that, he would like that. And then Matt DeShane for a goal plus 195 that is tom vecchio make sure you check him out on twitter at tom underscore vecchio one find his nba player props every day on the daily iso on the FanDuel research podcast feed tom thank you as always for swinging by delight to talk to you good luck tonight we'll talk to you again soon thanks for having me all right you can find tom on twitter at tom underscore vecchio one i am on twitter at jim Sonis. you can find me on threads at jim and check out fanduel research on twitter at fanduel research want to thank you all for tuning in for today good luck to you with your bets across tuesday we'll talk to you once again tomorrow talking f1 in saudi arabia and my favorite mlb futures for the 2024 season this has been covering the spread right here on the fanduel podcast network